Wasabi guys, welcome back to another episode of Weekly Warnings. Midway through December, as a reminder I record these videos the day before, so nothing should really change by the time this video is published. I've learned a lot about what exactly is going on on TCG Player that's affecting the market price. And it's not all just one issue, it's, it's a myriad of different problems. The overall sentiment though is that I see something wrong, I'm going to say something. The first card we have is Alpha Authority. It's a solid uncommon, it's a very solid uncommon that could easily find itself in a precon deck soon. And this has seen some play because of Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief and any green aura, or blue aura for that matter, is going to be taken advantage of because of that commander. But you look at the chart, and I've said this before, the first red flag is when you see something go straight up almost a vertical line. That's not typically how we see the charts behave if it's genuine interest. I mean, unless the card is so scarce, it's hard to find, which that might be the case for this one, where the card is so scarce that even just buying a couple at an inflated price is enough to do this to the chart. But we see an average of $1.50, we see a market of $3.38. The sales history snapshot shows us that uh, there's a couple suspicious sales, actually three. The 11th of December, we have $18.99, and then $18.99 again. And then the day before, we had $11.15. That's not normal, you don't usually see that unless... There's actual manipulation going on. A seller is trying to influence the price of this card because they have a lot of them in their inventory or they're getting people through the card optimizer. The next card is Season Dungeoneer. And something I should say about this series is that not all warnings are the same. I don't want you to look at something just because it goes up really quickly, which this did, I think, in a couple days. This went from being a sub $1 card, you know, a bulk rare, to $5. And now we see it getting close to 10 This is a legacy card, though. It does see play in some legacy mono-white uh, prison decks. So if you're like me and you focus primarily on Commander and you don't know why this would see play, it's because it's actually doing pretty well for legacy decks. I mean, evidently, it just keeps going up. And then we have Overseer of the Damned from the Arch Enemy Nickel Bolus. I think that was like a dual deck. You know, kind of like that, that product, but it came with several decks. And the goal of that product was to fight the Nickel Bolus player. So this came, I believe, in that deck. It's hard to explain. I mean, this is a cool product, but it's mostly just with reprints, and I think that's what didn't do it any favors. This is a good card, but it's more like a bulk rare. If your goal is to destroy a target creature, well, we have Ravenous Chupacabra, which is three mana cheaper than this. Doesn't have the other good abilities or the good stats, but most people, if you're looking for that removal on a creature, you would go with that one. So it getting above $3 seemingly overnight is kind of a red flag. And this is not a hard card to find either. It's been reprinted before in Commander decks, and they're all pretty much below 50 cents. You have five pages of listings for this one specifically, and we get our familiar friend here with the blue lightning bolt signaling that this is direct by TCG player eligible. And that's the whole point of them doing the several different listings of different conditions, but roughly around the same premium. Dig even deeper, and you see it's really suspicious if you look at the sales. I feel like I'm Jim Carrey in that one movie, 23. I think that's what it was called, where he just becomes obsessed with the number. Looking at these, you see the same exact number several times, which is, again, another red flag. And when there are this many red flags, it's safe to say that this is manipulation. The next card is Underworld Breach. This is a good card, and it does have some decent value. It has scarcity and desirability. That being said, I don't want people to think that just because a card has desirability, you can justify why it would be expensive doesn't mean that it's an absolute, right? It's not 100% manipulation free. We only have two pages of listings for this printing. So again, it has that scarcity. It's not the easiest rare to find. And people do want it because it is a good card. I think it does see competitive EDH play too. But just be aware that this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this on the first page of the listings. Those who have the large inventories, I mean, this is a sought after card too. They're going to cast a wide enough net. And you see out of these three listings, they got two of these direct eligible, which is something that people condense their cart so they're not buying from different sellers. They're actually getting their cards from TCG Player. So if you're looking to spend only like $10 on this card, these guys are going to ask for double. With CyberDrive Awakener, this is another example of this. It's not going to be the easiest card to find in the future because while it does come from a pre-con deck and we see that there are a lot of bulk cards that come out of pre-con decks, it's not exactly a product that everyone got into. This one in particular was very specific, right? You either like vehicles or you don't. And that was your reasoning for buying that pre-con. You have cards like these that are actually interesting. You know, they're worth at least a couple dollars. So it has some things going for it. It is harder to find. Again, you only have two pages of listings here. 
But just be aware that, again, just because you could justify why a card would be expensive doesn't mean that it also isn't being manipulated. If you're wondering why the direct to TCG player is so significant, this is the first page of the listings. You don't even see a single one, so if you're looking to optimize your cart, getting your package straight from TCG player, none of these sellers are going to be included in that. And you find that it's usually the larger sellers that take advantage of that direct feature. This algorithm is rewarding the bad sellers on the site. Most of these, not every single one of these on this first page, are well below the 50,000 sales mark. So they don't qualify for direct. I don't know the specifics of what you have to do in order to meet that requirement. But accounts like Last Save Point, they're clearly taking advantage of something that was intended to make your life easier. And looking at the sales, it is suspicious. You do see a lot of the same numbers, which tells me that it's probably an account selling to another account that they own, potentially driving up the market value so they can sell off bulk. Next card is Angelic Chorus. This is typical of this series where I review a lot of different cards that are going up. This is not what I would call a good card. It's totally playable. You could synergize with it. But we have ways of accomplishing this on creatures. Creatures just put in more work than enchantments that just sit on the field. And this isn't even an original print. This is from Battlebond. It has been trending upward, though, as you can see over the past couple years. So it tells me that some people are interested in this. However, there is also the potential for manipulation. And I see a lot of sales here, 7 and up which is way too much the average person is not going to spend that kind of money on this card. And then we have Elvish Reclaimer from Corset 2020. A solid one drop for what it's worth. Again, it's like Underworld Breach. You can justify why it would have some value. But then you look at the sales, and it's not the foil sales. I don't really care that people are spending a lot on foils. That rarely factors into the manipulation. But you look at the 11th of December, you see some sales that repeat. It's subtle manipulation. It's the kind of manipulation that a lot of people who maybe aren't the biggest fan of mine they like to brush off. They say, well, this is a nothing burger, but it adds up. And this is the final result. You get a trend that's upward. It's monkey see, monkey do. If the biggest sellers are getting away with it, that influences the other sellers, which is unfortunate because, you know, again, you look at the first pages, none of those qualify for direct. It's not exactly that scarce, though. You can value a card by scarcity and desirability. So this is, again, from a course set. Course sets have never had a problem with scarcity. A lot of those cards are pretty easy to find. This is just a desirable card because it's a solid one drop. It would be good for land strategies. Land strategies tend to have a lot of expensive cards. Last card is Elemental Bond. This is right in that sweet spot if you're someone who likes to manipulate and play games with the market. This is one of those cards that you would want for a deck. You could see why players would want to pick it up for their commander decks. I think it would even be playable in Pioneer, right? So it's got a couple things going for it. And it's just solid card draw. Yes, you could find better card draw in green. But for the mana that you're spending, it's not totally unreasonable. For however long it stays out there, you're drawing a card whenever those creatures enter. But looking at the snapshot, I see a lot of repeating sales that are well above the average. For all of these sales again to happen within a day, we're getting to the point where the manipulation is spreading to other cards that people can actually justify being expensive. So it's not as simple as just going on TCG Player to buy a couple cards. This is something that anybody could do if you want to avoid getting ripped off. Before you add something to your cart, just view the sales history. You'll thank me later because you see things like this. You can save yourself a lot of money just by going the extra step. So that's going to do it for this episode of Weekly Warnings. Nearing the end of December, I've been kind of slow with the videos lately. I don't know, it's just that time of the year, more so in that R&R &R mindset. So, hope you enjoy your end of the year. Commander Void signing off. I will see you all next time.